323 standing on the promises. Amen. Let's stand together and sing it. 323 by the Bible leaders. Standing on the promises of Christ my King, through eternal ages let his praises ring. Glory in the highest I will shout and sing. Standing on the promises of God. Standing, standing, standing on the promises of God my Savior. Standing, standing, I'm standing on the promises of God. Standing on the promises that cannot fail when the howling storms of doubt and fear assail. Shall prevail. I'm standing on the promises of God. Standing, standing, standing on the promises of God, my Savior. Standing, standing, I'm standing on the promises of God. On the last, standing on the promises I can every moment to the Spirit's call, resting in my Savior as my all in all, standing on the promises of God, standing, standing, standing on the promises of God, my Savior, standing, standing, I'm standing on the Good singing tonight. Good to see you in church on Wednesday night. And a good place to stand is right on the promises of God. And uh, so glad you're here this evening. Looking forward to what the Lord has for us in store tonight. All right, let's start with prayer, shall we? Heavenly Father, we bow before you now in prayer. We thank you, Lord, for another opportunity to gather together here. Lord, the promise that you've given to us that when we gather together, here you are in the midst. And Lord, tonight especially, give us what we need tonight. You know what we need uh, far better than what we know what we need. And so, Lord, I pray that you'd be glorified in our service tonight, that you would be pleased uh, with the songs we sing. May we sing unto you, hear the prayer that we bring you to you this evening, the reading of our missionary letter. Lord, especially, we pray your blessing on the Word of God as we open it and study it together this evening. May your will be done in our lives tonight. And we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Okay, you may be seated. Let's turn our hymnal to number 302, 302. Oh, it is wonderful to be a Christian. 302, on that first together. Life has purpose now it never had before. There is meaning to each day and even more. For a joy and peace I can't explain is mine. Since I found new life in Christ my Lord divine Oh, it is wonderful to be a Christian Oh, it is wonderful to be God's child Oh, it is wonderful to have your sins forgiven Oh, it is wonderful to be redeemed Justified, forever reconciled I can go directly to the Lord in prayer he has told me that I may enter there, and he listens as his promises I plead. I find mercy there and grace for every need. Oh, it is wonderful to be a Christian. Oh, it is wonderful to be God's child. Oh, it is wonderful to have your sins forgiven. Oh, it is wonderful to be redeemed, justified, forever reconciled. And the hope of heaven's glory thrills me so, where I'll live with Christ forevermore I know. That is why the things of earth I loosely hold. I've eternal riches better far than gold. Oh, it is wonderful to be a Christian. Oh, it is wonderful 
to be God's child. Oh, it is wonderful to have your sins forgiven. Oh, it is wonderful to be redeemed, justified, forever reconciled. This evening's missionary message from Jack and Sherry, Var uh, Sherry Var Jarvis. I'll get that out. From the Bearing Precious Seed Missionaries. Hi, folks. January and February have been very difficult, yet nice for our traveling. We were able to stay in one place for two months. And thank you, Lord, for that blessing. It was a big help as my back issues with pain, walking, and sitting extended into most of January. But the Lord has taught me to depend upon him no matter what, and that is always good. I'm currently up and around without pain and the cane, and thank you again, Lord, for that. The upside of my back problem is that my daughter-in-law, Elisa, okay, uh, was able to see the back doctor, and the doctor helped her also. Amen. Sherry and I have attended many different churches here in Florida, and we have met many new friends in Christ. One particular church we visited four times, a Sunday morning and three Wednesday nights, and each time they asked me to stand and tell them a God story of faith. Sherry also spoke at their ladies' retreat. They said we encouraged them and to stop in again wherever we were passing through. They are great people. We were really uplifted by them. God has always been good to us because we have driven thousands of miles and God's protection has been obvious because my driving isn't that good. Just, <laughs> just ask my wife. <laughs> driving in Mexico was a clear message from the Lord to me that surviving on the road had nothing to do with my talents or abilities behind the wheel. With all the other crazy drivers on the road, it was, it was without doubt about God and God alone who keeps me alive. And believe me, folks, if anyone thinks Mexico has a lack of crazy drivers, think again. My Christianity has also been far more on U.S. roads than it ever was in Mexico. The Lord made it clear to me that he is good and he is my protector, even when I don't see it. Although there are things in the world that I see happen that I don't understand, nor can I explain, I do know that God doesn't change. He is a good God and does good things. Our job is to believe trust, especially when we can't see why. That's why it's called faith. Prayer requests, please pray for God would bless the El Paso mission trips for 2015. Please pray for the roofing project of BPS El Paso. Please pray the Bearing Preci Precious Seed would be able to print all the Bibles that are requested in 2015. Please pray Please pray that I would be able to travel to Honduras for the week this summer to help my son Adam start preparing the foundation for his home he is building there. Please pray for our traveling mercies as Sherry and I will be tending many miles to the 250,000 plus we already have on our car and that I get new tires we need. Always in his service and always looking up, Jack and Sherry Jarvis. I don't know if this is part of the original or not, but it says if anyone needs their lawn mowed, see Bob. <laughs> I, I, is, that, is that on the original one? That's not there. I don't know. <laughs> That's something they added in there, all right? I think it's, I think it's see Pete, isn't it? But uh, all right. Good report from the Jarvises, and uh, good for them to be in Florida in the month of February. And uh, they... Uh, then you to pray for safety for them as they travel and present the ministry of uh, bearing precious seed, all right? Take your prayer guide tonight. Anybody, anybody have one? Anybody need one? Put your hand up. They'll get it to you right away. Everybody good? Good job, fellas. All right. Start on the back with the coming events, and um, we'll be praying for the RU inside tomorrow night down at the uh, CRC prison. And uh, appreciate you praying for that ministry on Thursday evenings. And then, of course, Friday night for Reformers Animus right here at Bible Baptist Church. And then Saturday morning for the soul winning and the bus visitation at 10 a.m. And uh, don't forget Emily Moreland's open house for graduation is Saturday as well from 2 to 7. All right? Just kind of a drop-in type thing. And uh, that's out at the Moreland's uh, 
Moreland's home, okay? Uh, Monday night, ladies, your night out. Yeah, that's uh, The sign-up sheet for that is downstairs on the table. And again, you're going to be building your own subs or ordering your own subs, and you got to put down what you want on it and how you want it done. So all that self-explanatory, I think, on the list, you just have to put a check mark beside what you want, okay? And uh, then be here Monday evening. You'll have a good time together then. Uh, the 28th is the three-on-three basketball tournament over at the Urban Crest Y, and uh, Brother Andy putting that on. And then, of course, remember the Lift Him Up, uh, the Choir Cantata and Drama on April 4 and 5, and Resurrection Sunday, the special offering we'll have on that day for those needs you're praying and fasting for on Wednesdays, okay? And I uh, appreciate you doing that. Praise report, 45 last week at the prison and 11 that received Christ as their Savior. And uh, just got another good letter from a fella. Uh, this week, and uh, just uh, God's doing some great things there at that uh, prison. It's so good to, to see the fellows right back and what God's doing in their life. It's, uh, it's great. And uh, the new speakers and the sound system, we praise the Lord for that, and uh, thank God for providing for those. Uh, the different church requests, continue to pray for them, uh, pray for the different health needs there. And uh, I add on to your uh, health needs, good to see Carol Coleman here tonight, by the way. Carol, glad you're here and uh, doing better. Uh, two things you want to add on there. Um, Brother Paul Lamprecht there, I have him in Doctors West. Um, I don't know if he's out of surgery yet, but he just went into surgery like 5 o'clock or so this afternoon. It was late, and uh, but he went in surgery. Paul fell, was it yesterday? Yeah, and uh, he broke his hip, and uh, so they had surgery to repair that, uh, and he's, he's there now, so be praying for him and for Diane both. Um, and for Diane's health. And then add um, uh, David Norris. David, put your hand up there. There he is. All right. Most of you know who David is. And uh, David's had some tests run that uh, showed that something's going on. And so they're going to have some more tests done and uh, do some further checking. And so keep him in your prayers, okay? Him and Lindy and Jose, go get that checked out. All right. And uh, appreciate you doing that. Praying for those in authority, from the president on down to our local leadership, and uh, doing what we can to. And by the way, praise the Lord that uh, He saw fit to keep Benjamin Netanyahu in office, and uh, that was that was a real uh, answer to prayer. That really was. Praise God for that, and uh, we're thankful. Pray for these uh, with cancer. Uh, Mrs. Wallace spoke to Pastor Berdine mm -hmm. on the phone yesterday, and uh, right now everything they don't, uh, he said it's, it's, he's not in remission, but uh, it's not growing. Uh, it's just kind of at a standstill right now, but he feels good. He's doing, doing the work of the ministry, and uh, he appreciates so much your prayers uh, on his behalf. And so continue to, continue to pray for him and pray for God's healing of this pastor, all right? And then uh, on the salvation list, uh, add a name there on salvation list, add uh, Carlton Smallwood. Carlton Smallwood, just like it sounds, okay? And uh, that's a friend of Quentin who he's witness to. We want to pray for his salvation. Okay, appreciate you adding that in. And then we're going to remember our military in prayer. And uh, Brother Paul Label, if you want to make your way towards the front here, I'm going to have you pray for us tonight. And then uh, pray for those defending us in the military. And then, of course, our missionaries. We want to continue to pray for them. Uh, highlighted tonight by uh, the Jarvises, who are, of course, representing Bearing Precious Seed El Paso. And uh, pray for their safety and uh, pray for them as they present the, the ministry in churches and that many churches will go down and take a missions trip this summer. Okay, we'll go to prayer tonight. Brother Paul Abel will lead us, and as he leads us audibly, you pray along with him silently. Don't just let your mind wander off. Just as he as he mentions things, you mention them, and uh, you unite our hearts together in prayer that way. Okay, Brother John, you lead us. Well, let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day that you've given us another day to live here in this world. We ask that you would uh, be able to take care of us throughout the days and the evenings, and we ask that you would be with uh, the pastor now as he brings a message tonight that we'll be able to hear it with our e open ears, and then also that we'd uh, be able to apply it to our lives. We ask that you'd be with uh, many, many of the guys that are in the prison ministry that's getting saved and getting uh, turned, get their lives turned around. We just pray that you'd continue to build a hedge about that uh, 
ministry down there and that uh, the men would continue to go even those that have left the, left that prison down there and went someplace else we just pray that you'd help them to continue to grow in the grace and knowledge of Jesus Christ our Lord and we do pray for the uh, the uh, <coughs> the ministries we have here at the church that are going on and we just pray that you would uh, help each one of us search our souls and, and say here am I, Lord, use me, and if you'd, you'd use us, you would let us know exactly where you'd want us to go, and then we pray that you'd help us as we set out to serve you. We do want to thank you for those ministries that you have that we can be able to get be involved in and in doing God's will here at this church, and we thank you for that. We thank you for the we're privilege of prayer where we can at, pray and ask God to help us through the, these uh, situations that we have when we take on something new and think we can't do it, but we can't do it, but it's just through you that we are able to do the, that that you want us to do, and we pray for those that are on our sick list. We pray that you'd help them uh, with the knee, with the hip problem. We just pray that you'd help him get that done and be able to get back on his feet and get back in his, get back in the, that the way you want him to do, and, and we pray for uh, Brother Norris. David, and uh, we pray that you'd help him in the, the test that uh, he's been taking, that they'll find out what's wrong and be able to uh, take care of it in a mighty quick way. And we ask that you'd help the, this pastor that's having trouble. We pray that you'd continue to help him get back on his feet and get uh, back up on doing that that he wants to do and needs to do. And we thank you for those that are uh, on this sick list, and we pray that you'd help him now. And Carol and, the, and all those that are on there now, we pray that you'd help him. And we pray for the, those that are on our uh, soul, the list that uh, cancer, that you'd help them. Cancer is something that you can never know about. It, it just comes and goes it's at times. And we ask that you'd help those that are on it, that you'd give them the strength and, and uh, comfort that they need as they go through these trials times. And we ask that you'd be with those on our, <coughs> our missionaries that are overseas. And we ask that you'd help them. At, You'd give them just exactly what they need as they set out to serve you. And those that are just getting ready to go to bed tonight, we just pray that you'd help them and give them that, that good night's rest. And then we ask that you'd wake them up in the morning they'd be able to continue to do what you want them to do. And we do thank you for them. And there's many of them that uh, uh, it's a big culture shock when they go to other countries and stuff. So we pray that you'd help them, give them the strength they need, them and their family. And we pray that they'd continue to look for you for all the help and that that you need. And we do pray for our country, dear Lord, and we pray that uh, that uh, these people that are in, uh, that we have in office, that they'll uh, get saved and, and uh, turn their lives around and want to serve you as uh, the way they should be. It's, uh, it's supposed to be we the people, not we the, we the men, you know. So we pray that you'd help them see that, uh, that they need to do what's right for us as well as, well as uh, their self. And we pray for our those who are in the military tonight. We pray that you give them comfort and watch over them and protect them and give them that, that they need to be able to do that, that you want them to do as in the military there. And we do pray for the service tonight, that you'd uh, be with the pastor, give, bless him and bless the word. And we ask that you'd be with us as a, the giving of the, the money that you've entrusted us with, that you would help us to be a cheerful giver and give back that you that that you blessed us with and we pray we'd be able to use it wisely tonight and we pray that you'd bless the nets this evening and pray in Jesus name amen, amen. all right want to this fine couple sitting over here is uh, Mr. and Mrs. Frank Wilson and uh, they're from Georgia, and they're not there, and I mean from, they are on their way to North Dakota, uh, Fargo, North Dakota, and uh, he is going to be provost at the Masters Baptist Bible College there, and uh, in Fargo, North Dakota, and Frank Wilson was a camper of mine in 1977. Uh, I had surrendered to preach in January of 1977, and I quit my job in May. Uh, I was going to go to Bible college in the fall. <clears throat> Decided I would be a counselor at a church at our church camp we had there at Camp Baptist Temple called Camp Choff, 
they called it CHA for Christian Hall of Fame. Uh, Canton has the Christian Hall of Fame, and that's so they called the camp Camp Chaff. Frank was from Warren, Ohio, and uh, his church came over for camp, and uh, he got saved that way at camp. And uh, uh, he's uh, been serving. And after that, of course, we didn't have any contact at all. It was probably ten years. Um, I think I've told this story before. Ten years, I was uh, getting ready to teach a soul winning class. Uh, at church and it was a Monday night and the phone rang and he asked if this was Stan Slaybaugh and that I used to be a counselor at uh, Camp Choff and made sure it was the right guy and he said this is Frank Wilson he said you led me to Christ 10 years ago at Camp Choff and he said I just wanted to call and tell you your fruit remains and, uh, and now here it is uh, 87 to 2015 that's another can that be another 28 years wow and uh, Deacon been through the Air Force um, he has been Deacon for years in churches and a real an interim pastor almost for a while there held the church together when the pastor left they were looking for a pastor and just a faithful man of God and now full time servant of God and uh, going up there to be in the ministry and uh, just uh, has a son that's training to be a preacher uh, at the college, has another son at Pensacola Christian College, has a daughter who's a nurse over in Indianapolis, and just uh, just what a blessing. And uh, was heading up through and just said wanted to stop in and, and uh, be able to be with us in the service tonight. And so it's uh, what, a, what a joy, what a delight to, to have him. So make sure you make him feel welcome tonight, will you? And uh, just, uh, just a delight to uh, see somebody and to appreciate his faithfulness through the years and staying with it. And uh, he'll tell you, you, you get some time, he'll tell you the story about how he met his wife and how they got, that was kind of unusual too, wasn't it? That was all God too, wasn't it? Huh? And uh, it was great. So uh, amazing, amazing thing. And uh, I'm so glad that you're here tonight. Thank you for taking time out and stopping to come. All right. Take your songbook. Let's sing again together, shall we? Number 241, marvelous grace of our loving Lord, grace that is greater than all our sin. 241, let's stand together to sing it. Brother Bob will lead us. Marvelous grace of our loving Lord, grace that exceeds our sin and our guilt. Yonder on Calvary's mount, Outboard there where the blood of the Lamb was spilled. Grace, grace, God's grace, grace that will pardon and cleanse within. Grace, grace, God's grace, grace that is And the souls to infinite laws, grace that is greater, yes, grace untold, points to the refuge, the mighty cross, grace, grace, God's grace, grace that will pardon and cleanse within. Amen. Greet one another. Make somebody feel welcome, especially our guest. We'll come back and sing those last stanzas together.
sing that chorus together. Grace, grace, God's grace, grace that will pardon and cleanse within. Grace, grace, God's grace, grace that is greater than all our sins. On that last, together, marvelous, infinite, matchless grace. On that last, marvelous, infinite, matchless grace. Freely bestowed on all who believe. You that are longing to see his face. Will you this moment his grace receive? Good singing. You can be seated. Ushers will come and get the offering tonight. We have a need, all right? We um, have been, oh, Brother Taylor and Brother Campbell, the last several days for many, many hours have been working on our big bus. Um, have replaced a hose, replaced a starter, changed the oil, put a new filter on, put a new fuel filter on. Got two new batteries. Uh, we're we're quite a bit into it, and it started up finally and was running. And he said, "Well, we'll go put fuel in it and run it down the highway and see how we do." And they got down south on 71 a little ways, and they heard a pop, and no oil pressure. Everything went into nothing. And not sure exactly what it is. It it's looking like it's something called a turbo or something that they need yeah. to get. And uh, right now, without looking at the actual numbers, and uh, the guy at the place who would do that kind of thing said it's, he ballparked it at 400 to $800. Now, you understand, to replace the bus with something that's good would be anywhere $6,000 and up. So it's, it's not a matter of just, hey, let's just get something else. This is a, this is a good bus. It's not giving us any problems at all till now. Uh, but we need to get that thing running. Uh, they're using the little thing, then they've, they're getting 14 on about a 10-passenger bus, and they, uh, they, they can get more than that if, uh, if we had that bus going. And uh, so we, we want to take an offering towards that, all right? Will you help us with that and try to get this thing uh, on the road? We can get that part, get it on, and get that thing running. Uh, it's a great, great tool, the bus ministry. And uh, we want to we wanna have that bus going through the neighborhood and uh, being a good advertisement for the Lord and uh, bringing in boys and girls and adults and teens and trying to win them to Christ, okay? So we'll take the offering towards that tonight, and uh, you give as the Lord leads you to give, all right? Let's pray together. Father, we ask your blessing on our giving tonight. Lord, we, we know that you know all about the need, and Lord, we're thankful for the men that have put so many hours in working on this bus and are willing to see it through to get the thing back on the road and uh, be able to be, use it Lord to bring others to church and be, uh, bring others to faith in Christ and Lord, give transportation for those who are unable to get here otherwise and Father I pray that you'd provide for the need Lord thank you for uh, people who are concerned about souls and concerned about a bus ministry Lord I pray you'll bless the offering tonight Lord, that you'll meet the need as only you can. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.
saw the giant of prayerlessness upon the mountain high. He laughed so hard at my unbended knee. No longer in the wilderness I'll stay, and so I cried. I want that mountain, it belongs to me. I want that mountain, I want that mountain. Where the milk and honey flow, where the grapes of Eskel grow, I want that mountain. I want that mountain, the mountain that my Lord has given me. Take your Bible this evening, if you would. Psalm 65. Psalm 65 for our starting point. Keep your Bible handy. You're going to be using them for a little bit this evening. Just two verses to start us off here in Psalm 65. Psalm 65, verse 1. Praise waiteth for thee, O God, in Zion, and unto thee shall the vow be performed. Now notice, if you will, verse number 2. O thou that hearest prayer, unto thee shall all flesh come. Now, Father, we bow before you this evening as we come to the study of your word. We want to thank you tonight for the Bible. Thank you, Lord, for being able to inspire your word and preserve your word for us, that we hold copies of it in our hand tonight. Lord, I pray that each of us would listen carefully. For we are listening tonight and reading not the words of men or the words of a man, but what we believe to be are the words of God. Amen. Lord, we believe your word of God is quick and it's powerful and it's sharper than any two-edged sword. And so, Father, I pray you would use your word in our lives tonight and teach us how you desire to answer prayer. Lord, I'll thank you for your help in advance. Guide us. Lead us, Holy Spirit, be our teacher. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Now, aren't you glad, by the way, thou that hearest prayer? Amen. Do you understand uh, where we have the only God that that can be said about? Amen. Do you understand there's a lot of religions in the world, but none of them can say that their God hears amen. prayer? Amen. God not only hears prayer, I believe He delights to hear prayer. And, and he delights to answer prayer. You've heard us say before in our studies of prayer that prayer is not trying to lay hold of or, or to overcome God's reluctance, but it's laying hold of his willingness. Now, I want you to look at several scriptures with me, all right? Uh, start at Mark chapter 11, okay? Go to the New Testament. Mark chapter 11, Matthew, and then Mark. Mark 11. Notice, if you will, verse number 22. Jesus answering, saith unto them, Have faith in God. 
For verily I say unto you, that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he saith. Therefore I say unto you, What things soever ye desire, when ye pray, believe that ye receive them, and ye shall have them. All right? Now here's a, uh, 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 an instance where the Lord is teaching His disciples about prayer. And what He's saying here is, when you pray, you must ask in faith. You must ask believing. Uh, believing that God can do what you're asking Him to do. And, and so that's very clear. We must have faith when we pray. Faith is depending on God. Dependence upon God. Uh, that's why the Bible says whatsoever is not of faith is what? Sin. Anything we do that we, have not, we are not depending on God for, that's sin. Because if we're not depending on God, who are we depending on? Ourselves. And, and I know that in me that is in my flesh dwelleth no good thing. And so uh, it may look like, listen, it may look like we're accomplishing something. But when we get to the judgment seat and the fire of God tries it, it will be nothing because we relied on self. So prayer, here's, here's the promise that we must ask in faith, believing. Now, there's another promise that the Lord gives in Matthew 18. Would you look there? Matthew chapter 18. Matthew 18, we touched on this. I'm not sure when it was, but recently. I remember reading these verses to you where the Lord says in Matthew 18 and verse number 19, Again, I say unto you that if two of you shall agree on earth as touching anything that they shall ask, it shall be done for them of my Father which is in heaven. So here's, here's another uh, incentive, here's another promise for prayer, and that is you can get somebody to agree with you in prayer. Now, not just to agree to pray with you, but agree as touching the thing you're praying about. You know, it's one thing to get somebody to pray with you. I remember years ago, Dr., uh, uh, hearing Dr. Hiles say that he would pray with Dr. John R. Rice, and he said, we'd agree to, to, to pray together. Now, I would tell him something we're really burdened about, you know, that we really need at church, and, and ask him if he'd pray with me about it. And he'd say, yeah, he would, and then he'd share something at the sword of the Lord that they needed, and would he I'd pray with him about it? And he said, I would. He said, we get down on our knees, and he said, and I'd pray about everything in him, and he'd pray everything about the sword of the Lord. We didn't pray for each other. So we didn't, we were, in, we were agreeing to pray together, but we didn't agree as touching the thing we're about to pray for. But that's a promise that God gives. That's a, that's a prayer promise. Look at Mark chapter 9. Mark chapter 9. Another, the, the third promise here. Mark chapter 9. Notice verse number 29. This is again the story of the man who had a son that was possessed and, and the disciples couldn't cast out the demon. And Jesus comes down and cast him out. Uh, in, in verse 28, they, they ask him, Why could we not cast him out? And here was Jesus' answer in verse 29. He said unto them, This kind can come forth by nothing but by what, church? prayer and fasting uh, there are some things you're going to get by praying there's some things there's this kind of requests that you're only going to get by prayer and fasting okay and and we understand that we've taught about uh, fasting last Wednesday night so God says here's another here's another way here's another promise that you have that you can get answers to prayer that is you can pray and fast all right now let's go to look another one look at John 14 we're going to get somewhere. Just sit tight. John 14. John 14. John 14 and verse number 13. Looking at prayer promises right now, okay? And I'll tie it all together for you here in a few minutes. John 14. Notice verse 13. Jesus says, Whatsoever ye shall ask in my name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. And if ye ask, if ye shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. So then, here's another promise of prayer. What is it? Asking in Jesus' name. Asking in Jesus' name. They said in Mark, ask in faith. In Matthew, agree with someone else in prayer. In Mark, fast and pray. 
here in John, we can ask in Jesus' name. Look one chapter over in John 15. John 15, verse number 7, where Jesus says these words, If ye abide in me, and my words abide in you, ye shall ask what ye will, and it shall be done unto you. So you can have answered prayer by abiding in Christ and allowing His words to abide in you. Okay? And let's look at one more, Luke 18. Luke 18. This is Jesus' teaching on prayer. I think we just looked at this in Sunday school about the widow, the one that avenged of her adversary. And notice what the Lord says here in verse number 7, And shall not God avenge His own elect, which cry day and night unto Him, though He bear long with them? Saying, uh, again, the widow got avenged. Why? Because of her continual coming. So the Lord teaches us here, remember again, that by persistence we can get our prayers answered. Persistence. Now, when you, when you most of the time, when you hear these prayer promises mentioned, it's taught that all six of these need to be met for you to get answers to prayer. And can I tell you, if that's the case, it would be very, very difficult to get any prayers answered. Because most of us are not going to line up all six of these and get all of them lined up in a row. And, and God is not in the business of making it difficult to get prayers answered. God, God wants to answer our prayers. So I don't believe you're looking at six steps to get your prayers answered. I think the Lord is trying to give us six different ways that He could answer our prayer. Not that you have to have them all lined up at once, but God is saying you can use any one of these in order to get your prayers answered. Not all of them, but any of them. That's how delighted God is to want to answer prayer. Listen, prayer, as most of you know, is asking. The word literally means ask, to ask. And so when we pray, we're asking God. What does He say? Ask, and it shall be given unto you. Seek, and ye shall knock, and it shall be. For everyone that asketh, receiveth. And he that seeketh, findeth. And him that knocketh, it shall be opened unto him. You see? And again, you heard me teach before. When you look at that passage of Scripture, and you understand what the Lord is teaching, there's, there's no, uh, uh, you, you've heard it, just like I've heard it taught through the years, that, that, and, and you, you, can, you can research it as I've researched it, and people say, well, how does God answer prayer? He answers prayer, yes, no, and wait. You've all heard that, okay? Now, the truth is, there's time you're going to wait, but you're not waiting to take no for an answer. You're waiting to be persistent. You're waiting for the importunity let me ask you a question. When Jesus taught on prayer, and that fellow came for three loaves, was he taking no for an answer? He was not. I think sometimes we, we cop out by saying God answers no because we're, we don't want to keep praying. That's kind of how we are as Americans. I want it, I want it now. And if I, I mean, when, when someone says, I've really prayed about it, I wonder sometimes what does that really mean? Did you pray a day? Did you pray two days? Did you pray five minutes? Uh, what does what really prayed about it mean to you? You understand? This, this, uh, this judge, remember we talked about Sunday, the judge was eye-weary. In other words, he hadn't been able to sleep. You're talking about days going on of sleeplessness where she kept continually coming to him, saying, Avenger of adversary. I don't know whether it was just all day and so when he laid awake, when he laid down at night, he still heard her voice. I don't know exactly how it went. I don't know if she sat outside his bedroom window saying, Avenger adversary, and, and kept hearing it. I don't know. But he got eye weary of it. But it's importunity. Because listen, ask and it shall be given unto you. Now we understand that's not just asking one time, that is the continual aspect of ask and ask and ask and keep on asking and seek and seek and seek and keep on seeking and pray and pray and pray and keep on praying in other words you, you, you don't 
take no for an answer. You don't, you don't go into the restaurant and the, and the waitress says, well, what would you have? And I'd say, well, I'd like an open face hot roast beef sandwich, please. And she doesn't look at me and say, I don't think you really need that. My, my wife would say that to me, but not, not the waitress. The waitress wouldn't say that. And, and by the way, if she would, I would look at her and say, it's really not up to you to tell me what I think I want. Is it? You don't pull in the gas station. Now, of course, nowadays, you, do, you pump your own. Remember the day when you used to, yeah, by the way, young people, they used to pump your own, they'd pump the gas for you. Did you know that? You used to pull in, sit in your car, a guy would come out and say, uh, how much would you like? And you'd tell him what you'd want in the tank. He'd not only put the gas in your tank, he'd wash your windshield, check your oil. He did all of that stuff. It was called a service station then. See. But I, I digress. The, you don't pull in and, and again, say, I want this much. They say, no, no, you don't, you don't want $20 worth. You only want 10 you know, I know what I want. I know what I need. This is what I need. And listen, when you, when, you, when you pray, and that's what the Lord is saying. By the way, what, how did Jesus end Luke 18? Did you notice? Verse number 8. I'll tell you, to avenge him speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man cometh, shall he find faith on the earth? Will he find people that have enough faith to pray like that? Or we just give up and say, well, God must have said no. And God said, I wouldn't have said no if you'd have kept on praying. wonder how many things when we get to heaven we'll see that God wanted to do for us and we quit asking. And he would have done it. And God just looks and says, must not have wanted it too bad. Must not have been too important to him. And we gave up. So prayer is asking. Listen, if you don't want it, then don't ask for it. If you don't desire it, then don't ask for it. Uh, James says that. You have not because you ask not. All right? So I don't think these are enemies to asking. I think these are encouragements to asking. I think these promises encourage us to pray. I'll be honest with you. If I had to line all six of these up and get them all lined up in order to get a prayer answered, I'd be discouraged because I'm not sure I could do that. But I know if I can hit one of them, I can get prayer answered. Well, let's look at them tonight, okay? Let's take the first one, which we said was faith. Faith or belief. Believing faith. By the way, believing faith can receive all that God has. If you just believe, if you just have faith. Let's say, let's say this. Let's say that you have a, a, a line, okay? At, at the, okay, the, the, the piano... The piano is unbelief, no faith at all, okay? But the organ is absolute certainty, okay? Which, by the way, isn't faith. You're absolute certain that, that God will do it, okay? Now, can I say this? Anywhere between here and there is what? Faith. Anywhere that's not unbelief, anywhere on this line between unbelief and and absolute certainty, anywhere you are on this is faith. Now, you may have faith. You can have, as you know, more faith, much faith. You can have so great faith. You know, there, there's degrees as you grow in faith. But anywhere on there is faith. And God says you can have faith. In fact, He said if you just have faith, the grain of a mustard seed. <laughs> he said, I tell you what, you could, you could move or move mountains the sea. You think he really meant that? Yeah, it's in the Bible. I believe that. And so any part of that is faith. Somebody says, well, you need perfect faith. I'm not sure there is any such thing. I'm not really sure there is such a thing. I think most of us are like the fellow in Mark 9 who said, Lord, I believe. Help thou my unbelief. Lord, I believe. Help thou my unbelief. I've heard it said, God will not answer you if you doubt. But God doesn't answer prayer in relation to our doubt. He answers prayer in relation to our faith. He answers prayer in relation to our faith. Remember, remember, was it was a Sunday night? We talked about Acts 12 and Peter getting out of jail. Remember, remember when Peter came and he knocked on the door? And Rhoda came and said, 
Ah, it's Peter. And she ran back in and told the prayer meeting, Peter's at the door. And they all said, Hey man, we've been expecting him. We've been praying for him to get out of jail. No. What'd they say? Oh, you're crazy. Or it's his ghost. Well, boy, listen. If it was just a matter of faith and no doubt, God wasn't going to answer their prayer. But God answered. He didn't answer according to their doubt. He answered according to faith. Because listen, just the fact that they prayed said they had some faith. The very fact that you pray says you have some faith. The ones who don't pray are the ones who don't, don't believe in God at all. And don't, don't, don't want to look to Him for any help. And so they had enough faith to pray. And they had enough faith that God answered. Because again, just asking God implies you have some faith. Because at least you're asking Him. So that's faith. Let's take the second one. Matthew 8, 18, 19, about agreeing with someone is touching something in prayer. Two people agree is touching the thing they're going to pray about. That means you, can, you each get encouraged by the other person's faith. You ever been encouraged by somebody else's faith? I have. You get courage from someone when they have faith. Don't you, why, do you think, why do you think that church wanted Brother Jarvis to tell a God story? You know why? That encourages your faith. You see what God does and answers the prayer that God has done? Then that encourages you. And so it, it, it encourages someone else when you can get someone to, to pray with you and, and share the same burden in prayer that you're burdened about. Okay? Now, that's not the, that, again, that's just another way. There's not a prerequisite. Many, many prayers in the Bible were answered and they were only prayed by one person. Didn't get somebody to join with them in prayer. You know, uh, Moses interceded for Israel when God was ready to wipe them out after the Exodus 32 and the Golden Calf episode with Aaron. God was ready to wipe them out and start over. And Moses interceded for them by himself and asked God to spare them. And the in the, the battle against the Amalekites there, and Joshua uh, said, Son, stand still. That's Joshua praying. And guess what? Son, sit still. And they fought for almost a day and uh, won the victory. That was Joshua. When Hezekiah was all by himself and, and wept and turned to the wall and asked God to give him uh, more time, and God stopped Isaiah and said, Go back and tell Hezekiah, I've given him 15 more years. That was a prayer who was all by himself. And so Elijah prayed that it wouldn't rain for three years, and, and, and it wouldn't rain for three and a half years. It never rained. I mean, that's just a single guy. All right? So there are, are times that, that single prayers work. Agreeing in prayer is, another, is just another promise, another way that God says we can have him answer our prayer. All right? So we agree in prayer. We have faith in prayer. Number three, and we've covered this from last week, but we'll, we'll touch on it again tonight, prayer and fasting. Prayer and fasting. You know, there, again, it's, it's a letting go of the physical and a grasping on to the spiritual. It's, it's, it's denying the flesh. It's humbling yourself. And, 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 and by the way, you'll, you, you fast a little bit, and your flesh starts getting upset. Huh? And you, that's when you tell the flesh, flesh, you're not in control of this thing today. I'm seeking God today. And you seek Him. And you look for Him. And, and you know, it's interesting. Remember, remember Saul when he got saved on the road to Damascus, Acts chapter 9? When, when they led him into Damascus, and, and meanwhile... He was there for three days while, Paul, while, while God spoke to Ananias and told him where he was for him to go get Saul. But Saul did what for three days after he got saved, do you know? He fasted. Fasted and prayed for three days. Before he found him and he got baptized and the scales fell off, he fasted and prayed. Look at Acts 13. Would you turn there for a minute? Acts 13. Acts 13, verse number 1. 
it, it talks about they were in the church of Antioch, certain prophets and teachers, and it lists the, the, the prophets and teachers there. Notice the first guy on the list is who? Barnabas. The last guy on the list is Saul, Barnabas and Saul. But now notice, as they ministered to the Lord and what? And fasted. The Holy Ghost said, separate me Barnabas and Saul for the work whereunto I have called them. And when they had fasted and prayed and laid their hands on them, they sent them away. So they, being sent forth by the Holy Ghost, departed unto Seleucia, and from thence they sailed to Cyprus. Notice, how did God single out Barnabas and Saul? They were fasting and praying. And when the church is going to get ready to send them away, what did they do? They fasted and prayed. You know what we do now when we send missionaries out? We feast and party. It hurts, doesn't it? Isn't that what we do? Oh, so-and-so, Moreland's are leaving for the midfield. Let's have a party for them. We ought to fast and pray for them. Lay hands on them. And ask the Holy Spirit of God to, to use them. See how far away we've gotten from the Bible. It's, it's, a, it's a fasting and prayer. Another way to see God hear and answer prayer. Praying and fasting. All right, let's cover the next one. Uh, this, is, this is John 14. John 14, 13 and 14. This is where the Lord Jesus taught about asking in His name. Whatsoever He's asking my name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. And if you ask anything in my name, I will do it. It's an interesting phrase. Did you know, did you know that the phrase, in Jesus' name, as we end our prayers with often? Do you know that phrase isn't in the Bible? And I'm afraid sometimes we just throw it on the end of our prayers like a good luck charm. That, well, this will work. I'm not, I'm not sure what I'm asking, but listen, you have to understand what asking in Jesus' name means. It means something. We kind of just throw it in there without any thought. But it means something. It means that what we're asking for would bring honor and glory to Jesus Christ. And that, that I believe that what I'm asking for is what He would ask for, in fact, so much so that I can sign His name to it. That whatever I ask for, Jesus would sign His name to it. Or I really shouldn't say in Jesus' name. He might not be what I'm asking for. He might be for what I'm asking for. Notice what he said again, verse 13. Notice what he says. Whatsoever you shall ask in my name, that will I do. Notice that the Father may be glorified in the Son. It is for God to be in a good light. As, as, as uh, Brother Currington says in RU, it's, it, when glory means to look good, it means, means for God to look good. Now that prayer we're praying, is that for me to look good? Or is it for God to look good? And, and will that make the Lord glorified? See, then, then, then I can put Jesus' name on there. If I'm not sure about that, then I better not use Jesus' name. Because He may not sign what I'm asking for. You see, it's not just to pray for what I want. And then, then to take the sting out of it that I'm asking for something that I just want. I'm not sure it's what God wants for me. Well, I know, how to, I know how to take that sting off a little bit. I'll put Jesus' name on there. And that'll make it better. See, that well, means something to put Jesus' name there. If it's for Jesus' sake and it would honor Him, then we have a right to pray that way. If it doesn't and we're not sure that it would, Let's not put his name on it. You wouldn't like it too well if you, somebody signed your name to something that you weren't for. You would say, wait a minute. What do you put my name on there for? You, know, it's, uh, you, you wouldn't be too kind about that. But now let me, let me make sure we understand something too. Listen, it, it's interesting what the Bible says. The Bible says we are heirs of God. So let me tell you that. We're in the family. God's our Father. 
we're the children of God. We cry, Abba, Father. Literally, Daddy, Father, Papa, Father. We're in the family. We're all the children of God by faith in Jesus Christ. So we're heirs of God, but that's not all. We are joint heirs with Jesus Christ. That blows my mind. How is, that, how is that even possible? That God would allow that to happen? But that's what He said. So listen, you, you, you and I, that's why, because, as we talked about Sunday, because the blood Jesus shed when He died on the cross and that veil of the temple was rent in two from top to bottom, we all have access to God. We all have equal access to God. You know, nobody, you don't have to go to someone else and say, man, I know you really can get a hold of God. Well, they may be able to get a hold of God, but they don't have any more access to God than you do. We can all come boldly to the throne of grace, find grace to help and, 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 and mercy to help and grace in time of need. And so we can all come boldly in there. And so we as children of God, we all come to God. We can pray. We can ask for what we need. And so we can pray and say, Father, just as well. We're in the family too. And so it's okay. So it's all right. You can pray. And, and if you're not sure that what you're asking for is what Jesus would sign His name to, say, well, then what do I say when I get done praying? Amen. Just say amen. That's all. Don't, 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 don't feel guilty about saying in Jesus' name. But by the way, you may catch yourself because it's become a habit. And we just habitually say that without thinking. You know what? You know what? Uh, I'll say this Sunday in our Sunday school class, but listen, the, the vain repetition, remember Jesus taught about prayer and he said, don't use vain repetition. That literally means words without thinking. We just say things and we don't even think about it. That's vain repetition. And sometimes even saying something like in Jesus' name can be a vain repetition because we're not even thinking about it. We're not thinking about what we're saying. Sometimes we pray. The danger sometimes of, use of, of a prayer list sometimes is we just go down through the list. And then someone asks, what have we prayed for? We don't remember what we prayed for. Okay, I got my prayers done. We didn't think about anything what we prayed for. I'm sure we're thinking. So that's asking in Jesus' name, okay? Boy, some of you look shell-shocked right now. I hope you're not, okay? And uh, let's go to the next one. You all right? You okay? All right. Abiding in Christ, number five. Abiding in Christ. Jesus said in John 15, verse number seven, If ye abide in me, and my words abide in you, ye shall ask what ye will, and it shall be done unto you. Now, abiding doesn't mean visiting. Abiding means living. You used to call... You used to call a home sometimes. You say, this is my humble abode. You ever heard that term? A abode, abide, it's where, it's where I live. And so, so what the Lord is saying here, when, when you live in me and my words are living in you, you shall ask what you will and it shall be done unto you. When, when His word lives in me and I'm living in Christ, Listen to me. It'll be impossible for me to ask amiss. I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. See, I'm dead to the flesh. I'm crucifying the flesh. I want Christ to live through me. And God says, when my words are living in you, delight thyself also in the Lord, and he shall give thee what? the desires of thy heart. That's not, oh man, a million dollars, brand new car, big house, those are, man, those are the desires I want. And boy, if I just delight myself in God, He'll give me what I'm lusting after. No, that's not what it's about. No, no, no. He's going to give you the desires. He'll give you the desires that will please Him. But you have to delight in Him. His delight is in the law of the Lord. And in, in His law doth He meditate day and night. His Word living in you. Most of us as believers, 
visit the Word of God. We don't live in the Word of God. Most Christians struggle to read the Bible, let alone ever memorize or meditate in the Bible. Living in the Word of God. And letting those words live in us. Let it live in you. That's abiding. You see, look at Hebrews 4. Would you go there? Are you okay? All right. We won't be long. This is, this is, this is important stuff. Hebrews 4. Sometimes you pray. Listen. I, sometimes you wonder, okay, when I'm praying, how do I know whether it's what I want or whether it's what God wants? How do I, how do I know the difference? Hebrews 4.12 will tell you that. And again, it's related to His Word. Notice what Hebrews 4.12 says. The Word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even the dividing asunder of what? Soul and spirit. All right? Let's, let's, let's back up. Your soul is made up of your what? Mind, will, and emotion. What I think, what I want, what I feel. My mind, my will, my emotions. What I, what I think, what I want, what I feel. Okay? Now, the spirit is, our spirit bears witness with God's spirit. So when the spirit of God tells us what God wants, what God thinks, what God feels, he communicates that to our spirit. And so our spirit is telling us what God wants, what God thinks and what God feels. How do I know whether it's what God wants or whether it's what my soul wants? What divides between the soul, what I want, what I think, what I feel, and what God says, and what God wants, and what God feels? What, what, how can I divide those two? The Word of God. The Word of God. If, you don't, if you're not abiding in the Word of God, if you're not living in the Word of God, you'll always be confused. It will never be clear to you. You'll be all be muddied up all the time. But if you abide in me and my words abide in you, then God says, I give you a blank check. Fill in the amount. Fill in whatever you want. That's the promise. That's amazing. That's incredible. But that's a wonderful promise. The last one is what we touched on earlier from Luke 18. That is keep on asking. Keep on asking. You know, what you, what you learn about prayer is there's never a time limit on it. There's never a time limit on prayer. Don't ever, don't, you, you can never say, well, too late now. Huh. Imagine telling God it's too late for something. I think Mary and Martha tried that, didn't they? Too late now, Lord, he's dead, man. By now he stinks. Like that's a problem? Not sure. I won't go there, but, you know, you, huh? Like, that's a problem for the Lord. God, God's, hey, listen, it, it's never too late till God says it's too late. We always say, oh, I got a deadline. Got a, got, God, you got to come through by then. And I wonder sometimes if God says, is that right? Huh? Like we really have a deadline. There's no limit on prayer. Day Days, weeks, months, years, decades, keep on praying. Importunity, constant begging in prayer. We're so, we're so quick to give up. We're so quick to stop and believe that, that God's not going to answer. No, you know what he's doing? He, he is wanting to see how sincere, how genuine, are, are, you, are you going to be fervent about this? Are you going to labor in prayer? Or do you just want the lamp to rub? Say, come on, God. This is my wish. Huh? He's not a genie in a bottle. Not going to happen that way. But these are things, listen, that God says you don't have to do all of them. If you can do any of them, I'd love to answer your prayer. I'm, I'm the God who hears prayer. Psalm 65, 2. O thou that hearest prayer, unto thee shall all flesh come. You believe God desires to answer prayer? 
Yes, he does. Do you have faith? Do you have enough faith to pray? Can you get someone else to agree with you as touching the thing you're praying about? No one to agree with you? Well, will you fast and pray? Seek God and seek the answer. Will you, will you ask in Jesus' name? Can you ask in Jesus' name? Will it honor and glorify Him? What about abiding in Christ? Are you living in Him and His words living in you? Will you keep on praying? Will you ask and ask and ask and ask and ask and keep on asking? And seek and seek and seek and seek and keep on seeking and knock and knock and knock and keep on knocking? God delights to answer our prayers. You know, you, under, you understand that if you're a parent in the room, you understand that so clearly. You, I, I, I delight to do things for my children. Sometimes we want to do things, but we physically can't do them. Or we're, 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 we're limited, whether it's physically or financially, we're limited and we can't do what we'd like to do. You understand, God doesn't have that problem. God, God doesn't say, you know, I, I'd like to do that, but I'm a little short this month. That's not God. God delights to do some, do things for his children just like we do. And Brother Frank, you think you think children are good. Wait till the grandchildren come home. Wow. God, oh thou that hearest prayer. These are not six things that have to all line up. They're six precious promises that God gives us to say, you don't have to meet all of them. If you can meet any of them. I'd like to answer your prayer. Isn't God good? What an honor. What a privilege to take everything to God in prayer. Let's stand together, shall we? Heavenly Father, we thank you now for this evening. Thank you, Lord, for everyone's attention tonight. Lord, thank you for the wonderful promises of prayer that you've given to us. Lord, I'm reminded of the preacher who said all of our failures are prayer failures. Lord, I believe that's been true in my life and maybe in true in the lives of many in this room. Lord, so many wonderful promises you've given to us. And I pray that each of us tonight, I pray that our Holy Spirit has stopped at every occupied seat this evening, ministered to your people. Lord, may be touched on one or several of these prayer promises. Somebody's going to go home tonight and going to claim these promises. We're going to see you answer prayer. Lord, we have needs that there are no way that humanly they can be met. We must have God. And we need you to be the God that hears to prayer. So, Lord, I pray you'll hear the prayers of thy people. There'll be some things happen in our lives and in the life of our church that an unbelieving world would look at and say, that has to be God. That just has to be God. Glorify yourself, Lord. May you be pleased as we call upon your name. We love you. We thank you for the opportunity to study your word together tonight. Dismiss us with your care, Lord. We do pray for Brother Paul. You'll be with him in the hospital and give him healing quickly from his hip. Pray for Stacy tonight, Lord, that you'll touch her body, Lord, and level out her sugar level, please. Take care of her tonight. Lord, we love you. Make us mindful of your presence as we leave this place tonight. Help us to please you in all we do. And I pray it in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Amen. Let's sing. Isn't he wonderful, wonderful, wonderful? Isn't Jesus, my Lord, wonderful? That'll be our closing chorus. Here we go. Let me hear you sing. Isn't he wonderful, wonderful, wonderful? Isn't Jesus, my Lord, wonderful? Eyes that see, ears have heard. It's recorded in God's Word. Isn't Jesus, my Lord, wonderful? I've never been 
never been in the Episcopalian church, but I think they could do better than we just did. All right, let's try it one more time. Let's sing it, all right? Isn't he wonderful, wonderful, wonderful? There you go. Wonderful. Eyes have seen, ears have heard. It's recorded in God's Word. Isn't Jesus my Lord wonderful? God bless you. You're dismissed.